Hey, it's Kasim with Solutions 8, and in this video, I want to show you how to set up conversion tracking inside of Google Ads. Um, the, the preface I want to provide is, um, this is the single biggest error I see on a consistent basis. Uh, we do a lot of campaign evaluations, as you can imagine, and uh, I'd say 50% of the time, people don't have tracking set up properly, um, or at all, which is, it's a catastrophic error. Google is a machine learning mechanism. It's a computer that is setting out to try to replicate success. And if you don't tell it what success is, or even worse, if you're giving it false positives, then you're going to throw your campaign off entirely. So um, conversion tracking is critically important. Today, I'm going to show you how to uh, set up conversion tracking for um, uh, form fills mostly, and, and I'll show you what that means. Uh, but the the you know if you're if you're trying to track conversions from phone calls, for instance, then you're probably going to want to use a third party software. We use call tracking metrics. That's not necessarily what this video is about. I'll show explain briefly why. Um, but let's dive into it. So I'm using, uh, I've got a dummy account pulled up here. Uh, we've got a, a website um, that I created just for uh, test purposes. I use this for a workshop, so we're going to use it here. And the conversion that I want to track on this website is if you go to the Contact Us page, there's this form that I've got pre-filled. And if I fill out this form, and this is really important, uh, when I fill out this form, it's going to take me to a separate thank you page. Now, uh, let me just open this in a new tab so we can keep that URL. But notice that I'm now on thank you dash contact. Um, previously, I was on contact us. So when I fill out the contact page here, it takes me to this thank you page. This is important because the change in URL is what I'm going to track. Now, you can track other things, um, you know, the, the, the click of a button, for instance. But the most reliable thing to track is when the URL changes. Uh, and the reason that's the most reliable is because it's it's the it's a very clear line of demarcation. There's not a whole lot that you know could have happened other than this person filled out the form and ended up on the thank you page. You know, assuming you don't have some weird um, navigation set up to where people can access your thank you page without filling out the form. I don't know why you would do that. Um, so this is the conversion that we're going to track. But this paradigm can fit for anything. So if you've got you know uh, lead magnet downloads, for instance, or somebody uh, can schedule online with you. Um, you know, I mean, any form that they can build out, any conversion point can ultimately result into a separate thank you page. And so that's the, um, the system that I'm going to teach you to, to track here. So Foist, we're going to go into uh, Lord Googly and click on Tools and Settings here. And then we're going to go to Conversions. Um, and in Conversions, we're going to click on our little blue plus bubble here. Now, it's going to ask us what it is that we want to track. And um, we can choose websites, apps, phone calls, or import offline conversions. Um, we're going to choose website conversions. I do want to make mention, though, that not tracking phone calls is another big error that I see. And uh, what we'd strongly recommend doing is using a third-party software called Call Tracking Metrics. I'm not an affiliate. I don't have an affiliate link to offer you. I just really like CTM. We've been using it for years. Um, awesome solution. But what Call Tracking Metrics allows you to do is you can actually record phone calls, listen to those calls, m manually score them, and then import those conversions into Google Ads. And the reason you want to do that is because if you don't, then you have to grade all of your phone calls based off of time threshold. So you're basically saying, hey, any phone call that lasts over 60 seconds or whatever is a lead, which we all know is not necessarily the truth. Um, as a matter of fact, it's generally not the case. So you end up having really muddy data if you just allow every phone call that lands to act as a lead or every phone call over a certain threshold. So use call tracking metrics. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to select uh, website conversions. Um, and inside of website conversions, Google's going to ask for a category. This is really important. Make sure the category you select is applicable to your conversion. What's interesting is this isn't going to impact any of your settings, but what I think is happening is Google's trying to build common denominators off of um, uh, categorization here. So the, the logic that they apply to specific campaigns is going to be based off of the you know, conversion categories that you're uh, allowing them. I like playing into Google's machine learning. Anytime I see them trying to you know, figure stuff out, I want to put myself on the right side of that. So make sure that you don't just phone this in and, and choose a willy-nilly category. Pick the one that's most applicable to you. Some of them are a little bit more generic than others. Um, I'm going to choose contact. Conversion name. This is really important. Um, you want to make sure that you're being as specific as you possibly can. Because if, you know, if I had, let's say I had four contact us forms on the site, which is not unusual. You know, some sites have, there's a contact us form that's uh, uh, ever present in the footer. There's one on the contact page. There's one that's in, you know, the right-hand column. Um, and if I just say contact us form here, well, now the question is, well, gosh, what, what, which contact us form? So if you've got really, you know, in-depth navigation, then make sure that your 
identifying your conversion name so it's easy for you to understand what conversion actually took place. Um, so I'm going to say contact form. Google's going to ask you to send a value. I actually don't recommend doing this unless you have a really clear value for each conversion. If you're selling something and we're tracking that conversion here, and you know, honestly, in most cases, that would be uh, uh, an e-commerce campaign. It would be set up a little bit differently. Um, but if there is a definitive value to something, you know, like let's say you're, you're, you're scheduling phone calls and you're charging 150 bucks a call and in order to have converted, they actually paid $150, um, then you can have a, uh, uh, a conversion value. But what I'd recommend doing is not assigning a conversion value. I realize that Google says this is not recommended. The reason I don't like assigning a conversion value is because Google's going to start trying to make decisions based off of the values you have assigned. And you don't necessarily want those decisions um, made because these conversion values are more often than not for lead generation tend to be pretty arbitrary. So let's leave value alone for now, unless you have a really good business case as to why you want to assign a value to your conversion. You can choose whether or not you're tracking every conversion that happens, or if you're only tracking one. So here's what this means. If you have a business where every single time somebody does something, you get paid again, then you want to track every conversion. But for my business, for instance, if you're somebody who's interested in Google ads management and you fill out my form because you're interested in me auditing your campaign, and then for whatever weird reason, you fill it out again, which has happened. I don't want to count that as a second conversion because you're still the same lead. There's no additional value to me in the fact that you filled out the form two times. So I'm going to select one. And our click through conversion window, we're going to take this to 90 days because we want it to be as broad as possible. Um, what this means is if somebody clicked 89 days ago and then converted today, assuming the session ID stays intact and all that good stuff, um, the conversion will still track. So keep this as broad as possible. If you've got a reason, you know, something that would require you to narrow that window down, I, I understand, but you need a business case to narrow it. I think you want it as broad as possible. View through conversion rate. On the other hand, I'm going to keep it one day. I really don't see this making an impact, to be honest with you, unless you're running heavy, heavy, heavy display. Um, including conversions. This is really interesting. You can track conversions that you don't include in the conversion values of your campaigns. So, you know, when Google's reporting on um, uh, the cost per conversion, you can choose whether or not this is being included. Uh, as a default, I'd say yes, because it's unlikely that you're going to track a bunch of things that you don't want to include in your conversions. Um, but you can, and, and it's actually advisable. If Let's say you have a lead magnet download where you say, hey, I don't want to optimize for this because this isn't where I make my money, but it's a predictive indicator of intent. So I'd be interested in seeing how many people do that. You can build conversion tracking for that, but not include it in conversions. I'm including conversions for now. Attribution model. This is finicky. Um, last click is probably the easiest. Statistically, it takes 2.5 clicks to catalyze a conversion, which means somebody's clicked on, you know, adjusted for margin three ads. So then the question is, is well, we, we had three ads clicked, but only one conversion. Which ad gets the credit? Um, the default is last click because that's, I think, just the easiest to wrap your head around. It's the last ad they saw and they finally converted. So the last ad got the credit. Um, now you can have first click attribution, too. And this makes a lot of sense because it lets you know where your traffic is coming from which campaign is buying your traffic, so to speak, because you might say, well, the last click is most important because that's actually what got them to convert. And I might argue, well, the first click is the most important because it's the one that brought them into the fold. Um, there's cases for both. That's why I like time decay the best. Uh, there's, there's reasons for everything. Uh, the data driven model, when you have much more data, uh, I think is probably going to be really exciting, but you know, for new campaigns, use time decay, uh, would be my recommendation. But then realize that there's going to be some some windows of time where you can you can actually throw off your data by um, by changing the, the 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 window that you're looking at. So um, it, it requires a little bit more sophistication uh, just in terms of interpreting your data. If you don't want to play that game, then I'd go last click. Um, and there's actually a bunch of reasons to to use first click too. We use this with one of our campaigns right now. My business partner has. Um, and just a really intelligent approach as to why first click is the only thing that matters because then we melt remarketing and we're not as concerned with which one of our remarketing campaigns brought them back because we know for a fact they're coming back. We want to know what acquired this client um, or this user. So I'm going to go with time decay, but there are other reasons to use uh, other attribution models. Once that's done, let's create and continue. Excuse me. Um, oh, I already have a contact us form. Aha. Tricked you, Google. Take that. So now Google says, how do you want to do this? You're going to install the tag yourself. This is probably the easiest, but long term, it's going to be the less uh, efficient. What you really want to do is use Google Tag Manager. Google Tag Manager, is, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's, it's a software that Google provides for free that allows you to manage all the tags that you'd be using on your website. Um, it's, I, I think, much more efficient, layers on some additional functionality, um, really 
cool application. And um, I'm going to show you how to use that now. So we're going to choose Use Google Tag Manager. Google is going to give us a conversion ID and a conversion label. So then uh, pause here. And I mean, don't pause the video, but pause on this frame. And then we're going to go to Google Tag Manager. And if you're at tagmanager.google.com, you might have to sign up for an account. Um, but this is what you're going to see. So we're going to create an account. And I'm going to call this uh, Royal Family Law Firm. I like to share data with Google because I think it's the right thing to do because it makes us all better. Um, and then we'll do tax attorney. Now, make sure your container name is actually the, the, the URL. You don't want to mess around here because you can actually throw some tracking off. Choose the platform you're tracking. For us, of course, it's going to be a website. And then cre uh, create, agree to you bequeathing them your soul and appendage and firstborn. Uh, if you ever read those docs, by the way, they're always so scary. So now we're going to install Tag Manager on our site. They want this code in the head and this code in the body. Incidentally, what we're doing will work if you only install uh, the code in the head. However, I would recommend doing both because I'm just a little OCD, to be honest. And if you ever want to use a Tag Manager in an expanded way, then it makes sense to have um, both of these codes installed. So I'm going to take uh, this code, go into my little website builder here. I'm using high level just because it lets me roll off templates super easy. Um, drop that in the head. Drop this code in the body, click the save button. Bam, I did it. I'm basically a web developer now. Now, don't let this be hard. High level makes it really easy, the head and the body uh, uh, tag insertion. Most web builders, um, you know, Wix, Squarespace, Weebly, uh, Duda, uh, I have yet to find a web builder that doesn't make this a simple process. WordPress is probably the hardest, depending on the theme that you're using, but um, it shouldn't be. There's a plugin that you can uh, uh, install. There's a billion plugins that you can install, but uh, if you have any issues with this, just, just YouTube how to install um, uh, Google Tag Manager inside of insert your CMS here. But this shouldn't be that big a deal. You'll see it took me a matter of seconds. So now that that's installed, uh, I'm actually going to build my conversion. So what I need to do is I need to tell Google Tag Manager what conversion I'm looking to track and when that uh, conversion is going to take place. So the very first thing I'm going to do is build my trigger. And uh, I select trigger here on the left-hand side. Then I click on New. And then I'm going to click that little button and it's going to ask me, what is it we're tracking? Now, this is where this video could just go right off the rails because we, you notice we can track a lot of things. Um, you could track form submission, which you would actually think looking at what it is that we're looking to track, that this would be the select the correct um, uh, selection. But what this is going to do is identify a form on a page and then work to uh, measure whether or not that form has been um, filled out. In my experience, this is not as efficient as page view. Page view is the simplest thing to track. Um, it's the most straightforward, and it's it's hard to mess up. So I'm going to track page view, and remember, we're tracking when somebody lands on the contact or on the thank you page, not on the contact us page. And that's another mistake that people make is they're like, oh, I want to track when people fill out the form, so I'm going to go track this page. Well, no, they haven't filled out the form yet. You want to track this page, and you'll notice you want a separate thank you page for every individual conversion action. So if I had four contact forms, I'd want four thank you pages, assuming you want to track each individual form, and I think you do because you want to know what it is that's getting people to take action. So I'm going to go track um, this page. So I clicked on page view, and uh, we don't want all page views. We're going to say some page views. Change this from host name to page URL contains and there's a lot of things that you can do here. So depending on the way that your site is constructed, um, you might need to use equals, for instance, because if I use contains, you know, let's say that it was just thank you. Um, if I say contains thank you, now anything that contains thank you, and if you have 500 thank you pages, then that could throw off your tracking. So um, this is a really simple site. I don't need to do that, but realize that there's other ways for you to build your, your logic, in including regex if you are a more advanced user. But right now I'm just gonna say contains, thank you contact, save. And we're going to call this contact us form. Boom. Can you tell I've done this before? And now that the trigger's built, we're going to submit um, contact us form. This is the version tracking, I believe, in GTM's publishing. So trigger's built. That's cool. Um, but now we need to build our tag. So I uh, built my trigger. I'm going to click on tag and select new tag configuration, uh, and now we're going to say Google Ads Conversion Tracking. So we're going to select this option here, and look at that. It wants a conversion ID and a conversion label. And guess what I just happen to have? Uh, here's my conversion ID. Come back over here, get my conversion label. 
Uh, I'm not going to fill out the rest of this. You can play with GTM if you want to. One of the, my favorite thought leaders in the space is a guy named Chris Mercer. Mercer owns Measurement Marketing. He's got a ton of amazing courses on Google Tag Manager if you want to learn uh, how to dive really deep. We're not going to do that right now. All we want to do is set up simple conversion tracking. So I'm not going to get into some of the more advanced features because really I couldn't if I wanted to. Um, Mercer's the dude for that. So, But we've got our conversion ID and our conversion label installed. Uh, once that's done, we're going to select our trigger and our trigger is the one that we just created, which is the contact us form. So um, select add, save. And remember, if we don't submit, it's not going to save. So let's publish. And for iterative tracking, you should probably be a little more descriptive than I just was, but it's not, I mean, it's not that huge a deal unless you're like really living inside of GTM and you need to track all the changes that are happening all the time. So. Now that I've done that, I have my um, my tag created and I've got my trigger created, but I need to test them. So what you're gonna do is select preview. And once you've selected preview, wait for it. Now we're gonna go to the website and we're going to refresh the page. And this little thing will pop up, this little tag manager, and it will say tags not fired. So I've got uh, Google Ads conversion tracking, but it has not been fired, which is good. That's what I want. So let's fill out this form again. Oops, misspelled my own name. That's embarrassing. I'm not going to give you my phone number because I don't trust you. Stranger on the internet. Um, now, when I click this button, it should say tags fired. And if it doesn't, it's going to be embarrassing. Wait for it. Hold your breath. <gasps> Yay, the tag fired. So now conversion tracking is working. Bam, we did it. So what we're going to do, first of all, go back to GTM and uh, leave preview mode, because if you don't, every time you go back to your website, uh, you're gonna be in preview mode and that little bubble thing's gonna pop up. Now that this is done, we're gonna select next, done, and we have contact us form two uh, enabled as a conversion action. Now, if I want to add this conversion action, number one, if it's in a, an account-based conversion, then it will be added to campaigns as uh, default as you're building those campaigns, and then you can choose to enable or disable. Um, but let's say I wanted to go to one of my campaigns um, well, I'll just use this one. Uh, and I wanted to add a conversion action. Uh, choose the campaign, click on settings, uh, additional settings, and then you can see conversion actions. And you'll notice that it's using account level conversions right out of the gate, which is super cool. Um, but you can have different conversion actions for different campaigns. So if you've got a bunch of conversion actions built out, then um, you can decide which conversion action is applicable to which campaign, assuming that there's a difference. Um, and now my campaign actually has something to strive to do. And the reason this is so important is because whatever it is you whatever conversion action you're defining is what Google is going to go and try to do. And that's the success that it's going to try to replicate. So critical that you do this for all of your campaigns and as many conversion actions as you can possibly have. And you want to build more conversion actions on your website. You don't want a site that doesn't have um, uh, repetitive conversion actions. I'll give you an example. This is self-serving because this is my website, but I think it's phenomenally well done. And of course I do, right? If I didn't, I shouldn't be doing what I do for a living. Um, here's my website and you'll notice I have, this is a conversion action, free action plan. You click on that, it's gonna bring you to my action plan form. Um, let's go back. Um, you just notice a little exit intent pop up, by the way. Uh, free action plan. Uh, there's call us in the top right hand corner. Uh, here's a contact, which is technically called action. Um, free action plan, free action plan, free action plan, free action plan. You can't be on my site and not receive consistent calls to action. Um, and the, the reason for that is because I want you to convert. So. Don't do the whole like, oh, oh, here's the schedule of time. Um, which you notice if you get down to the very bottom of my page, I assume like, okay, I've, I've offered you a free action plan. You don't want that. What if we let you talk to a real life human being? So build some repetition into those conversion actions. And that's one of the things that I think really going to help your campaign health. Um, but make sure that you're tracking every single one of them. And if, if what we do is we actually track them individually. So I can tell which one of those um, action plans is, is triggering the most conversions. And it lets me know how far down the page people get and, you know, what, Language is appealing to them potentially. You need to intuit a lot of value out of um, building conversion actions into your site. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, hit me in the comments. Answer those personally. If you liked my video, give me a thumbs up. Put a smile on my face. If you haven't subscribed, you should probably take care of that because I shoot a video every day and I want you to get a bunch of value. And if I get a thousand subscribers, I get to go live, which would be super cool for all of us. Um, that was it. Thanks for watching. You're awesome. I uh, hope you crush it in life and in business. And I'm going to see you next time.